This is the setup manual for the Camerodactyl Mongoose 35mm automatic film carrier. Most of these settings you'll have to do once uh, and they'll be saved to internal memory and so you won't have to do them again. So the first thing you're going to do is take a Ethernet cord and plug it in to the scan module and then plug that into the first port of the control module. Then um, the power cable uh, is a plug like that and that goes into the plug over here and then your cable release from your camera has a 2.5 millimeter audio jack uh, the mongoose will be supplied with a cable release for your specific camera currently it supports Nikon Canon Fuji Panasonic and maybe Hasselblad and I'll work on some others um, the cable release enters this port here and then you're ready to power it on. So the first thing you're going to do is press the power button over here. This yellow button cycles through shooting modes and setting modes. Um, I might bury some of these setting modes so that you can just toggle through uh, shooting modes in the release firmware. Um, but when you first get it, you need to set a few things up. So let's toggle through. First, let's go to the fast mode frame count. Um, this will become clear in the user manual what this does, but this sets the number of frames that you will average for a distance to be measured uh, between frames in, uh, in fast mode, which does not use edge detection. So to set this number, we press in the knob. We've entered a setting mode. You can set the number. I'm gonna set it to three. And then it'll make a confirmation beep when that memory is stored. Um, and then once you've pressed it, this knob becomes inactive again. Um, and you really only have to do that once when you set this thing up. That's uh, stored and will be refreshed when the mongoose is rebooted. The next mode is calibrate stop. This is important that you do with no film inside of the scanner. This allows the scanner to detect when the roll of film has run out and um, really you only have to do this once when you set this up uh, with a new power supply. So here we go. Um, basically you just press the knob once and the stop value is set. Um, and then you should never have to do that again for this device. Now let's look at the next mode. The next mode is trigger interval. This is the amount of time that the mongoose control box will pulse to your camera to trigger your camera. So to set this, I'm gonna back up. I'm just gonna hold these this up so we can see both the uh, attached camera frame and also the menu here. Um, what the trigger interval does is it sets the amount of time that the control box will trigger your camera for. And basically we wanna go as fast as possible where we reliably trigger just one frame and not no frames or uh, two frames. So I can press this button and change the number of milliseconds to trigger the camera for. So if I were to trigger the camera for, let's say, a thousand milliseconds, that's one second, um, we can test the current trigger interval with this red button, button two. Press that in. And now it's triggering for an entire second. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, it's best to do this with your camera on manual mode and set to a high shutter speed. Uh, let's see. Let's set this to 1250th. That's good. So if I press this down for a second, it'll take three pictures, uh, which we don't want. We just want to capture once. So then I can dial this back, let's say, we try 660, that's twice. And if I go all the way down to 10 milliseconds, it triggers once, which is good. If it didn't trigger, then I could up this trigger time to let's say 70 or 80 milliseconds or whatever causes the camera to trigger just once. So I'm gonna leave this at 10 milliseconds, press the button in and I'll hear a confirmation beep. And there we go. Uh, the trigger interval is now set and you'll only have to reset that if you change the attached camera in your copy setup. The next thing we want to set 
is the frame delay. This is the amount of time that the mongoose will wait after it triggers the camera before advancing to the next frame. So this amount of time uh, accounts for a shutter lag if your camera takes a while to take a picture, like if you have an old Sony Mavica. I don't know why you would use one of those, but okay. Um, also, the shutter speed of the camera. If you're shooting at a ten thousandth of a second, you don't need much of a delay here, but if you're shooting for an entire second, that's a thousand milliseconds that you want to delay before advancing the frame. Um, one more thing, some people may choose to use a strobe to illuminate their film rather than a light box, in which case um, you're going to want to set the frame delay to account for the flash recycle time so that you don't uh, take a picture of the following frame with no flash. So to set this delay, we push the knob in, then we can set any number. I'm using about 400 milliseconds to account for a fairly slow shutter speed. That's what I use in the Kickstarter. Uh, theoretically, we could do a roll of film 15 seconds faster if I used a faster shutter speed, but that wasn't, uh, I think, realistic. Once you've set your frame delay, you can press the knob one more time and you'll hear an audible confirmation beep that the setting has been saved to memory and you won't have to set that up again until you change your setup. Okay, the next settings mode is edge detect sensitivity. This determines how sensitive the edge detection sensors are in the mongoose. Um, I like to set this at 50 to start and you can set it between one and a hundred. If you find the mongoose is missing frames, you're gonna to wanna to turn the edge detect sensitivity up. And if you find the mongoose is accidentally triggering on vertical lines within your frame that are dark, uh, instead of the actual edges of the picture, you're gonna to wanna to turn the edge detect sensitivity down. So to set this number as before, we push the knob in and then we can set a value. I'm gonna set this to, let's say 50. And to save the setting, we're going to push the knob one more time. We'll hear an audible beep, and then the setting will be saved to internal memory for the next time you reboot the mongoose. Okay. The next mode is um, negative-positive mode for automatic scan mode, or sound on or off. To set the mongoose to be able to scan negatives or positives in automatic scan mode, we need to set either negative or positive mode in this settings mode. Um, negative will scan color or black and white negatives. Positive will also scan color or black and white slides. Uh, to set that, we push in the settings knob, uh, and then we can turn to set positive or negative. Um, we're gonna scan some negatives today, so I'm gonna set it to negative, and then I'm gonna push the button one more time and I'll hear a confirmation beep. and push the yellow button one more time, button one, and it takes us into manual mode. Now you've got your mongoose set up and ready to go. Um, please check out the user manual for how to use this guy in the next video. Thanks for watching.